RT versus Naruto Uzumaki. Brian RT fielding the barbarian hut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The talk of the town. Really playing that very effectively alongside the three musketeers. Meanwhile, he's actually also running. Don't let the barbarian hut confuse you. He is also running two hog riders, which I believe <laughs> makes him the only other. Maybe today there was another player playing double hog, but the only other player other than Chief Mystical. So maybe yes. Chief Mystical was mystical and, and keep seeing in into the future and being like, this is what's going to happen. Chief, Chief Mystical, member of Hammer's Esports, the same as Naruto Uzumaki. So it's possible that oh, Uzumaki has like, really been what, tested against yeah. this and actually knows uh, pretty well how to play against Hog Rider decks. Brian RT is looking to punish the big tanky investments of Uzumaki with those Hog Riders. Going under. But if he can't go under, you can always go over with the Barb Hut. Oh, okay. That's yeah. a lot seven, of barbarians. Seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see what's going in. I, I personally, I'm, like you said, you know, Naruto Uzumaki being so good at running whatever the meta is, right? He's the guy who's like, ah, this is what's good. I'm going to play it because it's good. So I feel like he might have the best shot. Also, it's Thursday night, and that's when, Thursdays is when every new Naruto episode comes out. So I'm going to give it to Naruto Uzumaki here. Yeah. Is that true? There we go. Semifinals, Brian RT versus Naruto Uzumaki. One of these two will be going on to the finals to face off against Middle Sky. To show how little I know about anime, one time Uzumaki was in the Super Magical <laughs> Cup, and I legitimately, I, I legitimately was like, ha, "You've activated my trap card." Oh my and God. Rainy looked at me like, "Are, are you serious?" And I'm like, "Is that a serious question?" Uh, no, I, no, it's not. Yeah, like, uh, is it true if you don't use it, you lose? Well, he is. Well, he is here right now, fighting for that chance for two thousand dollars. Let's see if he can take it. Well, Brian RT. Oh man, good times. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Rainy, I watch football. <laughs> Boom. It's Sports okay. Ball. It's <laughs> alright. Ball. Yeah, oh, going down. Let's see, it's going. Oh, the tombstone blocks the way. Give me the hug. Give me the hug. What's the timing? Oh, oh, one dark just survives. Two That's shots. exactly what I was looking for. Wow. I knew that the ice golem was ready to give his life for the greater good. I can't help but look at years now. When we look at these, the last time, <laughs> I'm so sorry. The last time we were taking bets, right? Yeah. On, uh, yeah. on like which tower would go down, and now I'm just thinking like, <laughs> do I know any facts about that tower half year? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we have the internet. Whatever you want to know, you let me know. I'll look it up for you. Uh oh, two that's years, a car that's Columbus really good against the the blue. There you go. There you go. He was probably thinking about it right now. You know, he's probably getting his plans ready. Get ready. Getting, the, getting no, the crew together. Building the ship. Bowler's probably one of the better matchups against. The, the Barbarian Hut right there, because not only are you knocking the barbs Ooh, back, but it's the penetrating damage. through and hitting the, the tower. That's right. Right. So not as great, but if another, I don't think the last squad of barbs is going to make it out, especially not with the arrows. Oh yeah, Zap and Arrows definitely takes it out. Although that was five elixir there. Was that really necessary to spend five elixir to finish off that barb hut? It seems kind of... Not one punch. Uh, Oh, right no, away! No! To greener pastures. Needed to play it on the left side because if you play it on the left side, the hog will actually jump. Making it move a little Point. bit faster. Oh, and it, be invulnerable. Does it get faster when it jumps? No, it just covers the the geometry. <laughs> oh, oh, it covers the geometry. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Map. All right. <laughs> yes. Uh oh. Oh, oh no! Got, oh, not real happy with that. Donk donk. Is he gonna hit him again? Oh. Oh, that's where the arrows comes in. Oh, didn't turn the bowler around. Two attempts at a hog rider defense. Very very. Difficult execution, but would have paid off in big ways if if Brian RT could do it. And we've mentioned before that the giant bowler deck should have a really good matchup against hog decks. Yes. Uh, this is a hog deck without lightning, which makes it a little tougher because we, we used to only, the only time we ever saw hog decks beat the bowler was with the, the lightning. You could zap it, turn it around. Oh, what musketeers happened? are going to start. Hold, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I think this tower might go down. Oh, oh you're right on the left side. Oh, oh, oh no. no. So right as we get into overtime, he's got the lightning and he is going to take down Brian RT's bottom right tower. Cool as a cucumber, Naruto knows exactly that he had the game in hand, and it's just... Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Must get here, make it. Did he go Super Saiyan? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, yes. I can't Ram take Ram. you anywhere. <laughs> yes, God. he did. All right, well, congratulations, Naruto. One step closer to $2,000. So the deck now that Naruto has to bring is what? Oh, the Golem deck. The Golem deck. Okay. Papa Pump, the biggest, toughest deck in the format. We've got, you know, pump pump. just to remind you, just because, you know, we see this deck every time, but it's the only one in the semifinals today. Golem, Baby Dragon, Archers, Lightning, Tombstone, mm -hmm. Ice Golem, Mega Minion. Okay. And it's got a little bit of everything. It's got some splash damage. It's got some good single target damage from the Archers. 
Mega Minion, Ice Golem. Important thing is that every single troop in the deck is very hard to remove with spells. Archers oh, are two body against lightning. Is Baby the dragon will die. Facing spell heavy or? Let's see. Well, we don't know if Brian RT is going to oh, stick true. with the, yeah. the deck. I think though, with lightning in both of his decks, Brian RT is kind of in a tough spot because you've got Barb Hut, you've yep. got yep. Three Musketeers. There's beautiful lightning. Yeah. 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 All right, well, we'll see. You guys let us know in chat who you think is going to be. Is Naruto going to take this 2-0, or will Brian RT come back and tie it up? Now, good news, if your name is Brian RT, is you've got Hog Rider against a deck that is at some point going to have to try to play an 8-cost gold. All right, and again, we, I, like oh, seeing, I like what Brian RT is doing. We've talked, again, against these Golem decks. I think that's my sister was born. Against these Golem oh, decks, uh, this is what you want to do. You want to take down a tower before it gets into overtime, and right. then you, you, you get your win. Absolutely. And what an interesting interaction that just happened there. Mega Minion allowed the Hog Rider to get two hits. Mini P.E.K.K.A., which does quite a bit more than the Mega Minion, would only allow one hit there. Oh. So that is one of those trade-offs that, you know, I think there's a lot of advantages to Mega Minion. There's definitely a lot of times where Mega Minion's gonna be real strong. But uh, that was a situation where I think Mini P.E.K.K.A. would've been a little better. Okay. By the way, this is exactly the situation you wanna see. When, they, when I say you put Barb Hut in this Golem deck, this is the exact Golem list you're looking to beat. Right. Okay. He's already got two squads of barbs. Wow, he, got, he got destroyed a, it. I mean, a way to think about it, though, is that he got five, five cost worth seven. of barbs, right? And then for the extra two, he got a really high health building that pulled a lot of the stuff over yeah, that way. Yeah, that's right. That's a, yeah, it's a great trade. Ooh. Oh, and another tombstone comes out. Go, one, two. Oh, oh so close. Got to swing faster with the hammer. You see an ice golem's going to block? Mm. And that at, holds off look at the that, archers. Bro, man. Mm. Predicting Just the future. On point. It, the idea there is that you want to spend as little elixir as possible. You could do something like Mega or uh Well, I guess all of them cost I mean you could do like Mega Minion or Archers that cost three, but you'd be way better off spending two, saving that elixir. Oop, time to hog. Is he might not have it in hand. Is he gonna go under? I think he might try to go hut. There yep. we go. So that's what happens. If you have the hog rider, you can try to punish. If not, you just say, you know what? You're gonna put eight on the board. I'll put seven on the board. And when it comes down to it, we'll both beat about the same amount of elixir when the fighting really gets going. The thing is the barbarians are tanky enough that even with the baby dragon and the and the mega minion on the field, the barbarians still get a few swings off and it's already a half health and it just crossed the bridge. Right, and it's, we've seen how much tombstone can be really strong, right? The skeletons build up, do a lot of damage. Downside, skeletons die when the uh, when the golem blows up. Not the same tr thing with Barbie. barbs, right? And of course, barbs are not nearly as vulnerable to log or zap or any of the other things that people wow. play. Wow, out. Those things That's up. a cycle. Ooh, and with the tombstone out, those barbs are... Go hog! They're gonna actually function kind of like an ice golem and distract all that. Oh, where are you going, Hog Rider? The is there a log? Off cycle. No, he's gonna play Fireball to make sure he lowers the health of the Mega Minion and the Baby Dragon. Now, what's interesting here is I think that there's a very real opportunity to play Three Musketeers oh, when you see the Golem come down to try to go over. Maybe you double bar time. Yes, possibly it is double, even double elixir bar time, bar. and that means you're actually making a full squad of barbs very Every often. Single, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and eventually they can overwhelm. I mean. We talk about how good Golem is in Double Elixir time, but Spawners are the oh, original it's my, Double it's Elixir it's time my deck. my favorite Double Elixir. Uses Lightning on the right side just to prevent the split push. Otherwise, he would have to put Elixir on the other side, troops and whatnot that wouldn't be very effective on counterattacking. Just Lightnings to get rid of it, and that way he can focus on the main push side. But right now, Ryan Ortiz looking pretty strong here. Let's see if he can log this thing. Nice, it good does timing. does expert timing, too. Pushes the arches away, one of them might abandon duty. Oh, it doesn't. Get the shot in. Again, this may be interesting because if Brian RT can take this, this might, you know, again, showing that, yes, Golem decks thrive in overtime uh, in double elixir, but a Barbarian Hut might be a great counter to that. It also just shows how, how good players can find unexpected cards. When you think, oh, there's no way to beat this, have you ever looked at cards that aren't good? You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. It's possible sure. that cards that aren't traditionally good are actually very strong right now. I've actually, one of my friends has gone back to playing Bomb Tower because Bomb Tower has a lot more health against Lightnings, and when you have that Golem and the Ice Golem there, you got like, you know, the two Golemites and the Ice Golem, Bomb Tower is just wrecking them. Haven't you've got feel that. Graveyard, you've got uh, Skeleton Army, Guards, all those cards. Here Archers, comes the all-in all push. By bomb tower. Look at that, he's gonna go to oh, the nice. bottom. Oh, 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 oh. And that is gonna be Brian RT just like that, into overtime, taking down Naruto, and we are going into game number three in the semifinals. Huh? And that's it, that's exactly why you play that deck. Yep. You're, you yeah. are hunting golem decks with the barb hut, and you saw that because of the faster cycle in the deck too, he was able to get back to his barb huts 
before the golems yeah. were out. And yeah. then it started to turn Crazy. the pressure around. How could have Naruto better defended his golem? Is there a way? Mm. You know, he was really going to have to rely on Baby Dragon and Mega Minion to do a lot of yeah. work there, which is why Brian RT was constantly fireballing those. the Mega Minion yeah. Baby Dragon combination. Yeah. I like that. Because a lot of times we see those, you know, everyone trying to get that fireball or get that rocket damage or lightning to hit the tower as well. But it's cool to see people using it. No, this is actually a way better for me to just take down these minions and get that lesser yeah. value. Yeah. So he was, kind of, he was doing the right thing, but it just didn't really yeah. work out for him. Weirdly enough, so his next deck is gonna be a much faster hog cycle deck. It doesn't run Three Musketeers, it doesn't run Barb Hut. It's, it's, the weird parallel card is Inferno Tower is Barb Hut in these two lists. And they seem like very different cards, but they serve the same purpose, being your anti-big tank, anti-golem right. yeah. card. So we've seen though with Chief Mystical, one of Uzumaki's clan mates, running double hog and having a very hard time closing games out. His first hog deck, his primary hog deck is really good. Right. Yep. The second hog deck, yep. Eh. I, I, again, I, I don't know if I asked this last time, but it was definitely in my head, so I'm gonna ask it because I forget what the answer was. If you have one deck that is your go-to hog deck, and you have all your best cards in it, it's the, just the premier hog deck and it wins every time, and then you have another hog deck in the, the, the double deck format, the ones you cycle out are just a little less than ideal. Is it better to have that, a really strong one, a really weak one, or you know, a weaker one, or do you just hit middle road? You give two good ones and two good ones and then two bad ones and two bad ones. I think you have to look at it in terms of what utilities you really need for that deck to be successful, right? If you find that you can have successful utility with the different support cards that you pick and you can spread them out, by all means, that's the way to do it. But if you know that there's only a certain way that you can play, a certain way to play the hog, for example, Hog Lightning is played very differently than something like maybe a Hog Cycle, where it's just really looking to pump out a sheer large amount of Hog Riders as opposed to just playing a Hog Rider and then using Lightning to blow your opponent away in one go. Oh, here we go with the punish. That is seven elixir at the river to counter to eight elixir gold. And the knight is getting pushed by the hog rider all the way up there. They're both locking on, doing a huge amount of damage. Whoa. Fireball on the archers. We're going to take out the defense. Get the a hit. Right around Get a hit. hit. Get a hit. Two there hits. it is. And just like that, Brian oh, RT can wow. go right back to defending for the rest. He's got, that's the exact kind of opening he wow. wants in this game. Absolutely. Three. Again, this is, the, this is the situation. You take down a tower before Gollum gets into that critical overtime mass, and you win the moment that clock goes down. One minute and 50 seconds is what Naruto Uzumaki has. Let's see what he can do. And at this point, he can just play as an Inferno Tower deck, right? I mean, there's no need to uh, to do those sort of really aggressive hog punishes unless you feel like you're going into overtime and you want a good lead on the second tower. Mm. But at this point, Hog Rider can just basically be deleted from the deck and just become a seven sure, card Inferno sure. Tower deck. Yeah. I mean, you can even, I mean, just in case, let's say you see a huge push and Naruto puts too much on one side, you're like, cool, I'll lose the tower, but I'm just gonna get another tower, and now we, now I'm just in the same situation yeah. again. And that might happen because, especially as we're going into double elixir time, it's not easy to stop a goal. <laughs> I mean, the golem decks, the reason why they're so popular is because they're really impossible to stop. I mean, they are the most overwhelming sort of push, and even if you do defend, they just lightning out most of your defense. Mm. The downside here for Uzumaki, is, or I'm sorry, for Brian RT, is that now he's got two defending towers, the king and the crown, and he's got to figure out a way to maybe take out that second tower yeah. when Hog Rider is under twice as much uh, attacking. How, how much more, I mean, how much more considerable defense does increase once you get that king tower locked in? The king tower, I believe, does higher DPS than the crown tower, so it's not even just like, oh, it's double crown tower, it's slightly better than that. Okay. Oh, oh, he pulls the uh, Ice Spirit off to the side. The Ice Spirit does not lock on to the tower, but the Ice Golem slow does. Wow. Brian RT was able to take more than half the tower health on the right side as uh, payment for uh, Naruto right. ex investing so much elixir in this tower's push. Tower's yet. Yeah. Here Only we go. 12 seconds left. Naruto, three or nine. He's got to get got through, or he is done. Let's see. It's exactly what we're seeing. Oh, he's got a lightning up, but he's already got the hog, and oh! The Ice Golem blows up on the skeletons on oh, a free wow. range. Wow. Two hits. Two hit one more. Oh. oh! But that is Fireball Zap range. Yes, Fireball yes. Zap will kill it. Okay, so it looks like even though Naruto's Maki may have gotten some overtime, Cycle. not out of the woods yet. Here it is. Whoop. There's a Fireball. There's the Zap, just like you called it. Brian RT from Reddit Troopers is moving on to face off Middle Sky in the finals. Congratulations. Congrats. Woo. How did he pull off those opening pushes? Those were... 
so Going good. Under. <laughs> exactly how I don't play Hog Rider, right? <laughs> I just mash my hogs out there and I lose. But <laughs> yeah. he had a very selective use of his hog riders. He only played, I think, three mm. throughout. Like once that first tower was down, he only played three on the right side. The first one, not effective. The second one got one swing. The last one planned perfectly, mm. timed in the moment when he knew that his opponent was gonna have to spend six elixir on a lightning. So he took advantage of that by going under. He only has four elixir for defense. He had hog. Ice Spirit, Ice Golem, Fireball. Jeez. That's like the full 10, 11 elixir push. And that was enough to do about 1,000 damage each shot and took it down. Okay, well, let's go to our replays of this amazing match to Woo. see our winner, Brian RT. Kill it. All right, taking a look at an in-depth replay here. We're going to take a look at Golem fighting against Barbarian Hut in slow motion. We see the Barbarian Hut is already installed in the middle position for Brian RT, and you can see that the Golem is ambling its way across. Now I want you guys to notice how tanky these Barbarians are. The Baby Dragon has already spit twice, but the Barbarians are already starting to work on the Golem. Now this is just the first two Barbarians that uh, have come out of the Barbarian Hut. Two more will be on the way, and notice how the Golem is actually taking that sideways path, not going towards the tower, going towards the hut instead, and that's what Rumham was saying about that two extra elixir as a defensive building. Now we see two Barbarians coming out. All right, let's hold the replay here. Now, let's take a look at what's on the field. Good drop by Brian RT on the Ice Golem. You'll notice that the skeletons from the tombstone, the baby dragon, is now locked onto the Ice Golem instead. Meanwhile, two Barbarians from the Barbarian Hut are tagging onto the Golem. Incidentally, the Golem is already at about 55% health. All right, now watch. The Golem is going to continue taking damage from both the Crown Towers yeah. and the Barbarians the and the Archers being dropped in the back and no damage is being done to the tower because that Barbarian Hut is soaking up everything. Plus the Fireball on top is going to make sure that Naruto's Mega Minion and Baby Dragon are put at lower health which means that after these Golemites are done, and by the way, that log only just cleared out the Barbarian Hut. Look at how much damage these archers do. We'll be able to clean up the baby dragon. We'll be able to clean up the Mega Minion. Let's go back to the start of this replay and watch that play out in real time. Make sure you pay attention to just how much damage these barbarians will do with the aid of the double crown tower. And it being such a tanky building, it's very different than Tombstone. Tombstone just gets run over in a single swing plus a log. That really wasn't an option for Naruto in this case because Barbarian Hut is just so effective. So many hit points both from the barbarians and the hut itself. Perfect card to play in the, in the meta right now against Golem decks. All right, Barbarian, hopefully the, the start of the return of the spawners. I hope before the end of the coronation we yeah. see an entire spawner deck. Oh, I think we Maybe so some healthy. tornadoes thrown in there? Yeah, because tornadoes out now, it right? Just came out. I, I checked, just I checked during the replay. It is out. I bought the special offer, and I have, <laughs> well, I got, you I have, have at least a level three tornado right wow, now. Wow, there we go. Already, wrong I'll be man. playing it right after the stream. Level three <laughs> tornado owner. Congratulations. Hopefully you guys are getting those at home as well. Let's pull up the bracket as we now have our two finalists here. For coronation number 12, it is Middle Sky versus Brian R.T. Rumham. The question to you, sir, is who is the victor? Well, the downside for the Barbarian Hut deck is that there are no golems on the other end. There is a giant, but oh. it's mm -hmm. giant plus the skeleton army graveyard it furnace, and furnace oh. matches up pretty well against Barb Hut, too. Huh. So he's going to have to really find a way to get a lot of value out of that deck. On the other hand, big advantage no lightning in either deck. Oh, wow. So those three musketeers 